So um, in this video, I want to demonstrate loading in an external optical field into GPVDM. And so this is GPVDM version 4.82. Um, now, if you go to the optical simulation editor, which is here, you get the device structure. Um, <clears throat> and this, is, this, this isn't a proper solar cell. This is just um, some optical wave, op optical um, waveguide thing I'm simulating it's you know it's not a prop it's not a proper solar cell but it doesn't matter so <clears throat> in GPUDM it's got various optical models so it's got which can be accessed through this menu here so it's got this full optical model which basically solves the forward and backwards wave uh, equations in um, a structure like this in a slab a slab structure like this and it takes into account reflection and transmission and absorption and things like that and destructive interference and constructive interference um, it's, other, it's also got other optical models, so it's got a ray tracing model that um, is used for simulating OLEDs. Uh, and it's got also this flat optical model. Um, and the, the purpose of this is, if, if we run the simulation, is it effectively approximates the optical, uh, so the photons in the device is effectively a, a flat distribution. And this is somewhat unphysical, but it's useful because uh, sometimes you want a flat distribution flat optical distribution so you can sort of s convince yourself that an effect you're looking at is not due to the modal profile of the light in, in the device. Um, another one I've got which is also a simple simplified optical model is the exponential um, optical distribution so if you run this it approximates the light in the device as basically just an exponential um, and again doesn't take into effect constructive and destructive interference. Um, but there's many other op types of optical models that GP GPVDM doesn't have in it. So at the moment I don't have a FDD, F FDTD um, model um, simply because I haven't had time to write one. Um, and you know there's a, there's a very wide variety of optical models that are available and sort of commercial ones and free ones. And um, I thought it'd be useful if you could import optical profiles from other models into GPVDM. So I've just added this function where you go from file. And this is <clears throat> it's not really an optical model in itself, but it will sort of load in optical data from somewhere. And then if you go to the optical setup tab, it's got this option down here, which says file containing generation rate. So if you click uh, these little dots there, it will take you to a little file chooser menu. So if you go to the desktop or my desktop and I'll select a text file, I've already got this generation rate profile here. Um, so I'll load that in and then it sets this value to pointing at this file here on the desktop. Then if I look at the generation rate and now run the um, material, run, run the optical model, it loads this generation profile into the device. Now um, this generation profile is clearly not really sensible because it's a sinusoid but I just wanted to sort of, sh you know, it's, it's an arbitrary charge generation profile. And if you run the run the model with uh, with um, with this profile, it'll use this to generate the um, the electrons and holes within the device. This here is the active layer, um, and and only charge that sort of is generated within this layer will actually enter the enter the electrical model. So all this all this um, all this uh, material here, all all, all 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 the electrons and holes basically falling in here will be effectively lost and not included in the model. Um, if we look at the file that it just loaded in in a text editor it's got one line which is a comment and it's a comment because it's got a, a hashtag at the very beginning. This denotes that it's a comment line. If you don't put that comment line in and include random text it'll probably just crash I imagine. I don't know. But it probably won't be happy. So um, this, if you look at this device, this is um, this device is that's a hundred, two hundred, uh, sorry, a three hundred, four hundred. So this this device, this de the thickness of this device is four hundred plus um, nanometers, and it's got uh, three layers. So this is where the light hits the device. So it's hitting at hitting at the top here, and this zero in the file here represents. So so this x axis here, this 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 column represents. Um, vertical position in the device. So this zero represents here and, and wherever it is down here at say 400 odd nanometers that would represent down here. 
this column here, and this is in this is in meters. This column here represents um, charge generation rate uh, in meters to minus three. Now, what GPVDM will do is basically take this file and project it onto its own uh, optical mesh. Now, this file here happens to contain um, so so this file here ends at six hundred uh, nanometers which is sort of off here down here at the bottom of the device this doesn't matter it'll just gpvm will just ignore this so you when setting up the device you've got to be careful that basically the layer structure here um, basically matches um, what you're what you're simulating in your fdtd model or, or, or whatever other optical model you have um what else is there i think that's really it yeah so I hope you find this feature useful. Um, yeah, uh, if there's any questions, just let me know. Thanks very much.